Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm recovering the Microsoft January 2021 updates. If you watch my update videos in the past, you know that I filter down all the noise that comes from Microsoft's announcements to really focus in and hone in on the relevant announcements for MSPs in the SMB space. And I basically try to figure out any announcements related to end of life, end of support, and also announcements that will impact end users so we can be a little bit more proactive in our documentation and notifications to them about that so you get less help as tickets. I will have a complete guide as well that I usually tag which is supplementing this that you can disperse internally that is documentation related to all the updates that I'll be covering today. Before I get into it here though I wanted to mention if you do want to see content around Microsoft 365 in the MSP space be sure to subscribe to the channel. Getting into it here though, I'm gonna start with Teams as it's Microsoft's most heavily invested product of their product suite and offering. First announcement here, we're looking at introducing History Menu, which I think is really cool. It helped me a lot of my workflows where you can hover and go to anything that you've been into in the past, recently visited locations. This really helps for those nested uh, channels within Teams that you've been to recently and that you toggle back and forth in. I do that a lot. And it's a big pain to go through, especially if you have a lot of Teams channels to go back. So I think this will be a really cool feature. And it'll begin in early February and complete by the end of February. These couple, next couple here are really light in the sense of end user impact, but I wanted to mention them here. Touch bar meeting controls for Mac users, not gonna read them all out there, but just some enhancements there that they might want to know about. This should be already in market, but maybe not something that they are aware of uh, that they can do. With, with the touch bar. The other one here is a little bit of a security enhancement where you're able to basically granularly decide who is put into the lobby and you can choose as a meeting organizer that only invited users can bypass the lobby automatically versus um, having to approve every single person that goes in there. So this is another security enhancement. It's going to start in early February and be complete by mid-February. Another one here you can uh, Ignore this one if you don't use webhooks. You might have already been seeing this, but basically they made a security enhancement for the URL format uh, for webhooks, and it allows you to use this tenant-friendly name, and it allows you to do better filter egress traffic that's coming from these connectors. And so users will be prompted to update that URL, and subsequently they will have to update any third party that's using the existing URL um, if applicable, but it should improve uh, security there. And as I mentioned, it's probably something that may have already been seeing, but you have three months to basically migrate to the new format that they've decided here. Next one here is for DLP policies. I put this one in here because DLP is part of certain business plans like business premium that you might have. And right now they've included the support for security groups and distribution lists for D Teams DLP policies. Previously, you could pick Teams channels and individual users. But if you really wanted to back up chats uh, or chat messages or have DOP policies for the particular users, it was pretty cumbersome to do it one user at a time. So they're allowing it to do in, in security groups or distribution list. And this will come out in mid-February and be complete by March. This one I didn't even know existed. You can ignore this if you're not using AIP labels, Azure Information Protection labels. But again, it's part of certain level of business plans, especially business premium. And um, basically they're changing the format here of the tag that's shown in a team channel. So basically if you have any files with any type of sensitivity label tag, it's going to display the parent uh, tag or label instead of the child. In this case, you know, the confidential is the parent and finance is the child underneath it. You can have a ton of nested labels underneath for your taxonomy of your labels. So it's just giving the, the high level category instead of the unique child underneath it. This is coming out mid-February through the end of March. Next one here, very quick one, end user impact, but should be a better experience. You'll just see this differently when you share a tray today for your sharing your screen. It pushes up all the shared screens that they're looking at up and they're just improving that experience in the sense that it's popping up into the corner here and then you can select you know, some of your desktop items or things like that. This will happen in mid-February and complete by mid-March. 
Another one here for Mac users, they may have already been seeing this or going to start to see this right now, um, but they will get prompted to install a driver trying to share some type of audio or video with their users um, on the actual screen share. So this is saying something like, I want the participants to hear the audio as part of the video that I'm trying to share out when I'm in an actual meeting. And so they only have to do this once, but they will get this prompt. So maybe something you want to send some communications out onto your Mac users that they will see that and that it's okay to install this. But it's uh, already coming out right now. It should be complete by the end of early February here. This other one here is kind of cool, I think, where they're allowing you to queue up messages when you don't have an internet connection. So today, if you don't have an internet connection or if you temporarily lost it, if you try to send a message, it'll just fail and not allow the user to send it. But if for some reason you've lost connection, it'll queue up that message here. And as long as you retain or maintain a connection within 24 hours, it'll still deliver that message to the user as intended. Otherwise, it still will cancel out and error out, but it's a much better experience than uh, what you've seen today. It's, again, same as the last one here, late January, early February. The Skype for Business online connector, this is for PowerShell users who were using Skype for Business connector. And right now it's going to go end of life as of July 31st. So you won't be able to use those commandlets anymore. You'll be directed to use the team commandlets that are replacing them. And as of February 15th, you will no longer be able to download the module itself. Microsoft Outlook here, shifting uh, this end user impact. First one here, it's going to start to pull in messages that it thinks that the user might not have uh, remembered to respond to at the top of their inbox. And it's only gonna bring one, one up at a time, not many, like it's not gonna populate 50 messages that they think that they didn't respond to. Um, but that will start to happen mid-February through March and targeted in early March. So if this is something that you don't want to happen or your end users start complaining about this and they don't like it, you can turn it off with PowerShell. And I put the PowerShell commandlets in the guide that I've attached to the bottom of this video. The other one here is kind of cool for OWA users. You're able to do this backslash in the email message and it's able to populate your most recently modified or opened uh, documents, notepads, things like that. So you can populate them in the email body. There's kind of a quicker way to populate that versus going to insert and trying to find this document nested, particularly in folders, things like that. It could save you some time, especially if you've been recently working on it. And this will happen in early February. And in the standard release, it'll happen in late February. Microsoft Intune, a couple of end of support messages really here. So for Mac users that are on 10.13, you'll want to upgrade them to 10.14 if you want them to be able to continue to support the latest version of the Microsoft 365 apps. They will not receive any of the security updates or bug fixes in the future if you do not do so, and that's something that you need to do now. So you'll want to take a look at your version of Office apps, obviously, but I would encourage you guys to start to upgrade if they're on 10.13. The other one here is for Android users. If they're still running version 5 here, they won't be supported after April. And so you'll want to make sure they're at least on version 6, Marshmallow, or greater. And that's really it for that one. Last one here is the Microsoft Admin app. This is something I didn't even know existed until this message as well too. So this app does allow you to have multi-tenant management of your customers in the sense that you can do high level tasks like being able to create users, assign a license to a user in this release, and also be able to open up support tickets really if you're direct with Microsoft. You can view invoices, you can view the message history, you can use view the health of tenants as well too. So it's kind of a cool app and I'll, I'm gonna do another video just to really quickly showcase it. But it is something like where you have texts that are mobile and you need to have them, you know, quickly assign a license to a user, deallocate. It's really easy in the sense to do that straight from the application versus having to log into the portal. And again, it does support multi-tenant level management capabilities. So you can see all your customers from within Partner Center. That's everything I wanted to showcase in this video for you guys. Again, I'll, I'll link that guide below for you here. But if you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them underneath the comments section. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, please subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.